In this video, we will look at the difference between ranking or prioritization and optimization when generating your FordWorks program. We will illustrate the differences between ranking and optimization by using a very simple Excel so example for a small and large project list. We will also discuss the potential benefits of using the more sophisticated optimization method as opposed to simple ranking. Before we delve into details, remember that in JunoViewer there are two core processes involved in the selection of treatments. First, there is the consideration of alternatives on each specific modeling segment to determine the best viable treatment to place on that segment. Second, we need to scan the list of treatments or projects selected in the first step and then choose the optimal combination of projects subject to the constraints of our budget and specific network considerations. So in this video, we are specifically interested in the second process, in which we assume that we already have, for each segment, the optimal project. But now we are interested in generating a basket of projects to optimize the benefit for the entire network. So let's go over to Excel and have a look at an example that illustrates the differences between these two approaches. So here I am in Excel and what I've done is to generate a list of projects, 20 different projects, and for each project I've randomly generated a cost and a benefit such that the benefit cost ratio for these 20 projects ranges between about 2 and roughly 10 or 12. All right, and what I've done is to calculate the total cost for all my potential projects, which I've put here at the top. That's 552. That could be thousands or millions of dollars. And my available budget, which is just an assumed value that I've put in there. And I've chosen something that's a bit more than half of the total potential cost. The cost of the selected projects here is simply the sum of the product between the cost field and the flag that indicates whether a project has been chosen or not. So if I change this flag to a 1, that means this project here has been chosen and you can see automatically the co total cost of selected projects increases to 30. If I switch on the second project, that should increase to 75. Right? And the sa same thing goes for the total benefit in which I've added up all of these benefits. So um, I essentially, in this field, I calculate the sum of the product between column D and column F. So the benefit multiplied by whether or not it, it is chosen. So this is a shortcut for me to calculate the total benefit for all the projects where the chosen flag is set to 1, meaning that that project has been chosen. All right, so I'm going to set my chosen values to 0 for all projects, and you can see the cost of selected projects is zero, and the total benefit for selected projects is also zero. <clears throat> now I'm going to use simple ranking, and all I'm going to do is to just rank my list of projects from uh, maximum benefit down to the minimum benefit. So I just use the data function, and I simply sort on the benefit, and I sort from largest to smallest. So you can see my project numbers are all mixed up now, but my benefit goes from the maximum right down to the minimum. And notice that my benefit cost ratio is not ranked. It's all over the show, basically. And now what I can do is I'm going to do what a typical ranking algorithm would do by just picking projects right from those with a maximum benefit until my cost of selected projects over here is roughly uh, equal or just below my available budget. So I'm going to start by setting this field to 1 and I'm just going to go down until I find that the cost of my selected projects is roughly 300. So you can see there it's 305 and if I switch on that project it's 350. So the break-even point is here, right, roughly in the middle here and if I go and set that to, so my budget year is exceeded. My budget is 330,000, let's say, or million. And the cost of all these projects I've selected is 350. So <clears throat> I need to take out a project and I'm going to take out the last one. 
and that gives me 305 which means that that is the optimal basket for my available budget now what I'm going to do is just take this total benefit um, so that this is the total benefit of the selected projects and I'm just going to add it in here as total benefit if ranking so I'm just ranking if I'm doing ranking then the, the total benefit of my ranking is uh, this value over here which is 1958 Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take my projects back again. Just do a simple uh, list. So I'm just sorting it here on project number from smallest to largest. That's my original list. And I'm going to again switch off all of my projects here. And now I'm going to use Excel's optimization function to get to find the optimal optimal combination of projects to give the maximal benefit so to do that I go to the data menu and I have my solver plugin installed this is a, a free plugin that you can get from Excel so I just open my solver and my objective function here is cell D7 which is the total benefit you can see that over there and I want to maximize this total benefit by changing the variables in cells F11 to F30. In other words, these ones over here, right? And then I've set up the constraints so that I have a binary set of constraints here, meaning these values could either be 0 or 1. And then I want the cell D6 here, which is the cost of my projects, to be less than or equal to the budget which is in this cell over here. So this budget cell is a named range. You can see if I go and change this, I, you can see that cell D6 must be less than the budget, which is in this cell over here. You can see that's a named range. Right. So I'm going to click on that and I'm going to solve this. And Excel has solved it for me. And I'm going to just keep this solution. Just, I just want to illustrate two more things in the solver function and that is that I am, uh, I've made my unconstrained variables non-negative meaning that these, if there are any unconstrained variables I don't want them to go negative that really doesn't apply to this binary case and I am using of the available methods I'm using the simplex linear programming method which is really uh, the fastest for this type of problem I have found. So just click on solve again and I'm keeping this solution and you can see now instead of just picking um, the optimal projects from the top down in terms of ranking if I just go and sort this again by benefit from largest to smallest you will see that um, the Excel optimizer has chosen the first few, but after that it's sort of gone and picked projects so that the, the, it can optimize the, the benefits. And if I compare this benefit to the one which I got through ranking, let's just do that quickly. So the total benefit if optimizing is equal to, and you can see, the answer I'm looking for is year 2216, 2216. And if I calculate what is the difference between the two as a percentage, I can say increased benefit if optimizing is equal to the differences between the two approaches. And I'm going to use my ranking benefit as a base value. And you can see that gives me a 13% benefit. So by comparing to simple ranking, by using optimization, I can get a 13% benefit in the total, a 13% increase in the total benefit that I can achieve for my network. So that's if I have a project list consisting of up to 20 projects. Let's go now to a much bigger project list and do the same thing. So on this sheet here, I've got 200 projects, which is the maximum number that Excel can handle for its optimization algorithm. So I've got 200 different projects here. 
and I'm going to just do exactly the same thing. This sheet is set up in exactly the, the same way as previous. In this case, the total potential cost of all projects is, is 5,942. I'm going to set my available budget to roughly 80% or so of that. So four, five, six, seven, it's just a, a figure I've picked. And again, the cost of my projects is the sum of the project of the cost multiplied by the chosen field and the total benefits, again, is the sum of the pro pro product of the benefit multiplied by the chosen flag. Right. And this field here, again, just to clarify, is called budget. So what I'm going to do is first do simple ranking. And I'm just going to copy these fields over here because this is what I actually want to do. And here I'm just going to remove these two values. And I'll fill them in later on. So first, I'm, what I'm going to do is to just um, very simply rank this whole lot or sort it in terms of benefit from the largest to the smallest. And what I'm going to do is just, just to turn on this chosen flag here one by one until my cost of selected budgets roughly meets my available budget. I've put in um, a freeze frame here so that I can just scroll this down and I can keep an eye on my cost of selected projects. So as I go down and switch on more and more projects, you can see that I'm now roughly halfway through and my budget, I still some remaining budget and I'm getting quite close now. And you can see there I'm almost at my budget limit, 4489 versus my budget of 4567. Let's see if we can switch on one more budget, one more project. Yes, we can. And there I get 4530 and I switch on another one, 4540 and another one. Now I've exceeded my budget. So this last one has blown the budget out. So I need to take that one out again. So I'm just going to change that to a zero. And you can see I've got now a cost of 4540 compared to my budget of 4567. If I add any more projects as ranked by benefit, then I will exceed my budget. So the total benefit that I've achieved through the ranking method is 30,058. So I'm going to just put that in here, 30,058. And now I'm going to switch off all my projects again. And I'm going to use the same approach before by using a more sophisticated approach, which actually um, uses the solver. I'm not going to bother to order this back to pro by project. I'm going to leave it ranked by benefit because for the solver, it doesn't matter how your projects are ranked. So I'm going to do my solver. It's exactly the same setup as before, except that I'm using a bigger range. So I'm going up to cell 210 here. And ag again, I'm using the simplex linear programming method. And there Excel has solved it for me. And you can see total cost of projects matches exactly the available budget. Let's look at the total benefit. The total benefit is 30765. So if I do optimization, I get a total benefit of that. Whereas if I just do simple ranking, I get a total benefit of, um, of 30058 versus for optimization 30765. So by using the more sophisticated optimization, I've achieved a 2% improvement in the total benefit of the network. So you can see as the number of potential projects increases, the actual choice of projects become less lumpy and choosing one or another project has a, a smaller impact on the total change in the network benefit. So in summary, as you can see, optimization can improve the total benefits that can be obtained by determining an optimal combination of projects to consider. However, if you have many, say big, more than 200 projects to consider, the benefit of optimization may be relatively small, say less than 5%. Ranking makes it easier to understand why your model chose one project over another. 
If you are using optimization, the reason for a project not being selected may be because of optimization. Or is it because of an error in your model? Who knows? This is the so-called black box effect. JunoViewer offers both a ranking and an optimization approach in most of its deterioration modeling algorithms. It may be best to start with simple ranking while you test and debug your model. You can then switch to optimization once you are confident that your model is doing exactly what you intend for it to do. If you have any questions or constructive comments on this video or topic, or if you would like to learn more about Junovius powerful modeling framework, email us today at info at Thanks for watching.